Well, welcome everybody. You are here with us for our Friday happy hour live. And um, us Uncle Nearest folks like to get together during the quarantine time and just spread a little bit of joy, a little bit of whiskey love and some distraction and uh, do some toasts together. And we always have a very special guest with us. And tonight, talk about a special guest. You guys, get ready to be drooling, not because of the whiskey, <laughs> not because you've had too much to drink, <laughs> but because something delicious is going to happen. So take it away, May. Hi, everyone. Welcome to VIP Happy Hour. Thank you so much for that welcome, Taylor. Um, I have been teasing about this episode for days and enticing you guys. So joining us today is our super special guest, Chef Moses Ponce. Uh, Chef Moses is the head, ran the, was the head of the pastry department for the infamous Chateau Marmont. Those of you in LA know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you have to actually find an NDA to work there. So needless to say, there's a lot of interesting stories that we're not allowed to share. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Moses and I actually worked at Chateau, um, but at separate times. Moses has also worked with the Mina Group and also at the Bazaar with Chef Jose Andres. So with that Ooh. said, Chef Moses, let us take it away to your kitchen. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for being with me today. This is so much fun for me. Um, so today I'll be making the Uncle Nearest Maple Donuts. Uh, so a fun fact about me, like I love maple donuts. They're by far my favorite. Whenever I'm in a donut shop, that's definitely my go-to and I need to have it. Um, and after tasting the Uncle Nearest, I just, you know, I mean, for one, I just loved it. Uh, it had a nice maple finish to it, and it just made my head just go to donuts. And I'm like, you know what? I want to mix the two together. Why not? Love you know, it. What can go wrong with fried dough and some really great whiskey? <laughs> so yeah, that's where my whole idea with the donut came from. And you know, I'm here to make it with you guys, and let's have a good time. Love it. Uh, love it. I cannot wait. Can you, can you start us off with what we're going to be needing in our kitchen to cook along with you? Yeah, of course. So the ingredients you're going to need, you're going to need some powdered sugar, uh, some salt, maple syrup, some Uncle Nearest 1856. <laughs> and we're going to be using the Grand Flaky Biscuit dough uh, for the donuts. You know, normally I would make these with a uh, dough that I would make with flour, yeast, sugar, all of that. But again, we're in quarantine right now. Uh, this is going to be something super fun to do with either your spouse and, you know, even the kids. We can make it a non-alcoholic version. Uh, but super simple, easy to go. And yeah, this is all we're going to need for the ingredients list. Um, for, sorry, uh, for all the equipment you're going to need, you're going to need a cutting board, a large pot. You're gonna need some measuring cups, measuring spoons, uh, a nice medium bowl, and a whisk. You're gonna need this. Um, you're gonna need some kitchen tongs, or if you don't have these fancy chef ones, a butter knife will do to remove the donuts. I will show you how to do that later. And a spoon for basting your donuts. So you're gonna need that. A thermometer. If you don't have a thermometer, don't worry. I can walk you through it later on how to get the right temperature with your oil without a thermometer. Awesome. I do not have a thermometer, so I'm going to need to know that. <laughs> it comes in handy, believe it or not. I know. I had one. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to get started with you guys, and I'm going to go over how to make the Uncle Nearest Maple Blaze. So first we're going to get the medium-sized bowl. We're going to do two cups of the powdered sugar. So powder, so it has to be powdered sugar. It can't be granulated sugar. It has okay. to be powdered sugar. Uh, once you add the liquid, it's going to melt really nicely, um, pretty quickly. Uh, if okay. you were to use this like regular sugar, it would just, it wouldn't be the right consistency. It'd be a little grainy. Okay, gotcha. Sailor, it looks, it looks like I'm Scarface right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> it's just like all over. You want to steal the donuts from me? I kill you. I kill you. I mean, a little, a little extra sugar is not going to hurt anybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you, let, let's say that to the parents watching right now who are going to be like, why didn't you tell me that I can give extra sugar to my kids? <laughs> While they're in the house. <laughs> While they're in the house. Okay, sorry. Maple syrup, yes. Next step, maple syrup. We're going to use about a cup. We're going to use a cup of this. There. By the way, Speedy's with us. He's trying to figure out his lighting right now. <laughs> so, a uh, chef Moses doesn't matter if it's pure maple syrup. Uh, it doesn't have to be pure maple syrup. You can get the how do I say it? Artificial flavored maple wait, syrup. Wait, Hank, hold, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. New Englander here. There is no such thing. There is only one maple syrup. Well, there's maple Rule syrup and then there's syrup. So it's like, <laughs> thank you. You just squirt over all the egos. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I don't know what. <laughs> Caramel coloring and high fructose corn syrup. There you go. <laughs> um, next, we're going to add a pinch of salt. Pinch I know you guys are thinking, like, ooh, salt with the donut, but trust me, it's just going to make the flavor pop out. Ooh. It's going to be really good. And last but not least, our Uncle Nearest. Uh, just to let you guys know, the alcohol will not be cooked out in this. So these are adult donuts. If you would like to make kid-friendly donuts, just omit the alcohol and we're good to go. I think that needs to be a TV show called Adult Donuts, guys. These, that's that's <laughs> going to be a new thing. These <laughs> donuts are 21 plus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chef Moses. I'm totally distracting. How much Uncle Nearest 1856 are we adding? Uh, two teaspoons. Okay, and we you. will post this full recipe you guys um we always post these videos after we're live onto the uncle nearest facebook page and so we will put all of the uh ingredients and and the steps to it there as well uh let's just give this a whisk get it going it's gonna be really clumpy it's gonna look like you're not like you don't have enough liquid in there but once you start getting it going it's gonna just melt right on up there so don't freak out and add more whiskey like that would yeah. be me i would totally uh, do that i mean for each his own a little <laughs> extra whiskey never hurt anybody i'm sorry can you can you say that again louder <laughs> a, a little whiskey never hurt anybody i love it <laughs> you are so getting an uncle nearest apron chef moses I'm oh just yes right now. oh yes, yes. uh-huh bring on the swag I'm trying to get, so, I'm trying to convince people to get Uncle Nearest tattoos. So anybody that wants to get an Uncle Nearest tattoo with me, oh, <laughs> we're, actually, we're I've buying. Actually, I've seen a couple. Hi, Speedy. Hi, May. So Yay. quick little, little, little uh-oh yes. that I forgot to do. Let's turn on our oil first and foremost. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna, you, you want to turn on your oil before you start mixing everything? Or? Yes. Uh, okay. You're going to want to put it on a medium heat. Okay. And Chef, how much are we adding into our pot? Uh, the, for oil, you want to go about three quarters of the way. You don't want to over put too much oil in it because it can topple over. Um, you know, donuts don't fry that hard, so the oil's not going to get that crazy. But you know, in the event that oil ever does spill over and an accident does happen and fire is involved, please don't ever throw water on an oil fire. It's going to make it worse. Throw salt, throw flour, but don't use water. Or whiskey. Or whiskey. <laughs> Jinx. That's going to be one mean syrup. <laughs> Jinx Pumpernickel Sailor. <laughs> you don't waste good whiskey like that guy. No. Not safe. <laughs> no they're not <laughs> whiskey from <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, um, Chef, what kind, what kind of oil did my, I can't see the labels. The oil, do, are we supposed to get again? Uh, you can use vegetable oil. I'm using, I mean, no. You can use vegetable oil. I'm using canola oil. Okay. Uh, some people like to fry with shortening. That's oh. too fatty for me. It comes out too thick and rich. Um, it tastes great though, but not good for the side. Ugh, the quarantine so belly. Canola oil. No. <laughs> I know. Uh, and I, we're not helping, right? By the way, we're contributing to the issue, but we're yes. all going to be really happy after. It's called happiness. So we're contributing to the happiness. It's called happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, chef, does does canola oil? fry at a higher temperature than mm -hmm. vegetable canola, canola oil i mean canola oil and vegetable oil pretty much fry at higher temperatures and look like an olive oil um but yeah they fry up to higher temperatures you can reach up to temperatures like 350 375 and it's nice it's not smoking and pretty much anything you fry in there is good and uh, um, um is that because the 
um, versus the olive oil, the viscosity of it? Yeah, the oil on the, the olive oil is a bit harsher. Yeah. Plus, you also don't want to fry with olive oil. Like, it's expensive. We're in quarantine. We got to save our money. Olive oil's in my blood, man. <laughs> it is literally <laughs> olive oil and whiskey is what runs through my blood. <laughs> right. Sailor, uh, the, the best olive oil I ever had was in Greece. Of course. Well, down. of course. I mean, Hands Italians down. steal everything from us. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other show. That's another show. Sidebar. Digression. It's the truth. So it is the truth. Excuse me. We invented math. We invented everything. Windex fixes everything. Haven't you seen my big fat Greek wedding? <laughs> more land, more land. <laughs> I love it. So I have the glazier. Mm. Have a nice, Yum. smooth glaze. You know, if you want to dip a finger in there, try it a spoon, a ladle, a, a straw. That works too. A cup. <laughs> a cup. <laughs> sippy, sippy cup, anything. <laughs> sippy cup. <laughs> I know what Sailor and I are having at our next sales meeting in yes. cups. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man, that would be hilarious. Why is your why are you so sweet right now? Why are you why are you smelling alcohol? <laughs> And why are you sleeping? Like, then we'd fall asleep. Wake up. We just started this meeting. I know, right? Why are they, why are they sleeping in the back? <laughs> so full of donut batter. I know. Whiskey donut batter, guys. Whiskey donut Even batter. Even better. Oh, my God. Sweet. Uh, so, next I'm going to show you guys how to make the donuts. Or mm -hmm. at least form them with this. So, this is always my least favorite part. I hate opening these things. Doesn't it scare you? Does it make you jump? It does. Every like, Me it's too! Just weird. It's just, I know it's gonna happen, but it's yes. like, oh, I don't know when it's gonna happen. I'm just like... It's like the jack-in-the-box <laughs> thing, you know? And, and you, you do it, even though you know it's gonna happen, you're like, I'm not gonna jump. And then this happens, and it's even scarier, because then you have to, like, <laughs> manually do it now. <laughs> and then that happens. <laughs> exactly like that. It. That happens when my phone rings. I'm like, first I'm like, who dares uh, to call me and want to talk in person? But it rings and I not jump. Answer calling me? <laughs> Perfect. So here we got the donuts or the dough, fresh out of the tube. Just gonna lay them out on the cutting board. You get about eight pieces. I mean, eight pieces is good for like one person, right? Donut. Oh sure. So I'm gonna need to get like four cans. Got it. For two it's people. like when you go get Krispy Kreme and you just inhale like the first box on the way home. <laughs> kind of like this. You guys it. know, I, I bought a mini stepper for quarantine just to try to stay looking like a human being and not a beached whale during this time. And I don't think this is going to help at all, but I'm we okay with that. decided there's no calories no. in quarantine. It doesn't exist. So we're fine. No, calories don't count in quarantine. Nope. Um, oh, girl, awesome. as, as we get out of the house, I'll be rocking out nothing but sweatpants. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> yeah, this year's bathing swimsuit season will be a sweatpants season. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Everyone's going to be dying to go out and just get some sun and lay out in the beach. <laughs> I'll be right there with them. All right, what do we do with the dough? Uh, so next up, you're going to want to grab your index and middle finger. Oh. You're going to want to just like gently push them down just to like shape them a little bit bigger. So this is what they look like out of the tube. This is what they look like after you've like pressed them down a little bit, stretched them out. So you're not going to make like complete so, pancakes out of them. So it's like half, it's basically like half the height of what it was before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Great. So I know when Everyone thinks of donuts. It's like, I need all this equipment. I need like a big donut fryer. I mean, we all want one of those in our kitchen. Sure. But, you know, it's not realistic for everybody. And also ring cutters. Not everybody has ring cutters. And in the time of quarantine, we're not just going to rush out to the store and go pick some up. So you can use your hands. Make a little hole in the middle. Oh. Oh. Just like that. We just That's all became nifty. professional donut makers. Hey. Okay. That's super then, nifty. Oh. Yeah, Bone <laughs> apple cheese. Like that, right? <laughs> I love it. Uh, Guys, you don't is, it, is it wrong that I'm doing it? Hold on. <laughs> Not yeah. at all. Um, you gotta make sure that like you can see through it. That's how you know you have perfect like 
perfect hole in donut. The perfect what a great donut tip. Hole. See, I oh, wait a minute. contributed to this culinary segment. Where do donut holes come from then? I'm so confused. Funny when they punch them out. Oh, okay. Kind of. When they're That's being where the, fancy. That's where the donut hole came from. You got to utilize the scraps, especially when you're frying dough. Like, just because it's not sure. pretty, like, that can be your Scooby snack later. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Scooby snacks are not a bad thing. <laughs> love it. So I'm just going to do a couple of these. Once you have them at this point already, just put them on a floured surface, either like a cookie sheet with some flour on it, uh, some cooking spray, because when it does start to proof, it's going to release some moisture and it will stick. And it will be hard to take so, off. And okay. So Chef, what does it mean when it proofs? Because when uh, we think just, proof, we think a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> you're just letting the yeast like do its thing, you know, build those gas bubbles in there. It's going to make the dough a lot lighter. It's going to Add some air in it, you know, make it nice. You're gonna have some nice fluffy donuts. So proofing, you do that with bread, you do that with pastries, doughs, you know. You just wanna get a nice rise out of them. I like getting a nice rise out of people. I think I do it that way. <laughs> Especially but... after a few drinks, you know. <laughs> exactly. Do you have any famous stories for us? Because you happen to work in a very famous place that is quite notorious and has been in like 50 million trillion movies, right? Not, with, not without getting sued. Not without getting sued. Before. Those, <laughs> there those has NDAs, to... Wait, no, 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 no. Those NDAs are forever until what? like eternity. Absolutely. But what if someone mm -hmm. else has told the story? That Then the NDA is broken. Sorry, no, 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 no. Sailor, so that's for our after, after, after hour show. After, after, after hours. <laughs> after, like, sitting on the couch having girl talk and like having a piece of whiskey. Like. I'm so coming to LA the second this crap is over. Yes. Girl, I'm just going to make a world <laughs> tour. I'm so desperate for human. Like, I, I, I am a hugger, but I don't think I realized how much of a hugger I was. Because if I do go out... Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I've got my mask, my everything, you know, I'm, I look like I'm, you know, going to the moon and I've just had to be like, hi, and I just so bad want to, yeah. Well, you realize you're a hugger until it's like a national like issue where you're like, don't touch anybody. Yes. 100%. <laughs> like, oh no. Sailor, I wish you could have yeah, seen gonna, Kayla and myself yesterday. Uh, it oh. was the same thing. Just. <laughs> you guys, he's, so Speedy sends me a picture Speedy is from Tennessee, and um, one of my best friends in the world, who's also one of my podcast partners, is a beautiful mixologist um, in Nashville. And so they, so I get a text message yesterday from Speedy, and it's a picture of him holding his camera like this with his mask on, and I can see someone's back in the picture. And I'm like, who, what's going on? Who is that? And then I get a text message from Kayla, and it's her, the other side, and I can see Speedy like this in the background. I'm like, I start bawling. I'm like, oh my God, you guys. Oh You're my the God. Best. <laughs> my two favorite people. And yeah, you guys couldn't touch each other. It's awful. Yeah, it, you know, I but stepped it, off the elevator and, you know, immediately we just paused. <laughs> I love you from a distance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's going to feel so good when we're able to uh, again. So it's, it's yeah, going to be, 1, it's yes. going to, it's going to be so, appre uh, it's going to be, I'm, I think I'm going to choke the air out of people. Like I think I'm going <laughs> to hug people that hard, you know, and I'm like a really tiny girl, but I'm really strong. So, yeah. Like don't let that fool you. I'll pick people up. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Chef Moses, how long should we put our timer for? You're going to want to set your timer for about five minutes. I'll do that with you guys. It's always a good habit just to get into that, especially when you're baking. Uh, a lot of stuff is precise. It's like exactly four minutes, three minutes, two minutes. So just always have a timer in hand in general. Uh, so we're going to set it for five minutes right now. And so I think this is a perfect time to pour a little bit of whiskey and see if we have any questions for Chef Moses. What do you think? Mm. I yep. agree. Awesome. You have a bottle. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Guess ooh. So speed so we're gonna ask the guests if they have any questions, they can type them to us. In the meantime, Speedy, what are you drinking? Old fashioned, barrel aged. Ooh. In an upstairs barrel. 
Oh, you know what? Okay, let's talk about this for a second. This is so unfair. You get <laughs> Uncle Nearest Barrels. We do not. That you know, I, is... I, I specifically order them. What, the, what, what, what does that mean, I specifically order them? <laughs> What does that but even I mean? He has this like order. smug smile too when he yeah, that. Yeah, I, I he's can like, specifically I order, order one too. I tried to order one and I'm told I can't have it, so. Well, I was the um, kind of the uh, test market for it. So I had a few uh, specific accounts, um, hotel bars that mm -hmm. wanted to try it out. So uh, there was one in particular that's a historic hotel here in Nashville that has a um, very strong tie with Jack Daniels. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to tie those two together because it is a story of love, honor, and respect. So uh, yes. not only that, but built a flight for them called Love, Honor, and Respect with 1884. Mm -hmm. They're they're single and 1856. I love that. And love so that. with the uh, with the barrels themselves, uh, also because I'm here in Tennessee, obviously I helped put together the uh, grand opening in September. I love that. And so uh, at that party, I personally, my, my friend and I both batched together over 5,000 cocktails the day before that party. And wow. so each of these cocktails were served out of these little two liter or five liter uh, barrels. So I have one of these barrels, you know, it's a personal souvenir that I barrel aged cocktails at home. The rest are out at the, uh, the property. And so we have toppies out there, uh, which is a grab and go mm -hmm. bar. So I, I barrel aged these cocktails out there for people that want to come in. They go through the tour. They walk back there. They have a cocktail. They walk to the back of the uh, porch. We have over 40 um, rocking chairs back there. So you watch the sun go down because literally it is a copper sky back there. And one of the cocktails is called Copper Skies. I yeah. love it. And Our so, distillery is so beautiful. It's so that beautiful. sounds amazing. Absolutely. Oh my God. M Moses, so, I have to kidnap you and bring you there once this is all over. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are doing this. Um, I'll make donuts for everybody as long as you guys just. Okay. Me. So <laughs> I, so I, okay. Let, again, I'm going to make another executive decision, even though I have no power, but we like to <laughs> pretend that I have power. So, <laughs> so all, of, so each of us brand ambassadors in our region get to bring people to what's called a founder's tour. And the Founders Tour is really amazing. Um, it's an extended special tour that you can do, and the public can do this as well. Mm -hmm. And it's usually led by Fawn and Victoria and Sherry, so our founders. And you get to go to the gravesite of Uncle Nearest and Jack Daniels, and you get to go oh, to the wow. Dan Call Farm, and you get to walk to the stream and drink out of the stream that is on the property that is in the same aquifer still making Jack Daniels and um, is the original water and, and source used in the whiskey that uncle nearest was making with jack um and then you get to go to our new distillery we take you to lunch at miss mary bobo's we take you out so and if you come with one of us it's a little bit extra special so we each get to bring someone from our region some people and so uh we bring uh people who are very important to our market and to us and to build family relationships with. So like you are chefs, um, our bartenders, our hotel managers, people like that. Um, so I was supposed to have one coming up in two weeks, <laughs> but of course that's not happening. I get to bring right the PNW, <laughs> right? So uh, May, I think you guys already had yours, right? For, did you have yours already? We had it a while ago, but there <laughs> might be something in the works, not too far, so, possibly, yeah. maybe, hoping, fingers crossed. Well, I was going to say, I can just, I can just add Moses to mine. <gasps> yeah, we yeah. have a full yeah. docket. We have a full yeah. docket coming up. Uh, it's, it's moved back incrementally, month by month. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, normally we do one to two a month. And so what we're going to do, I'm your Tennessee person, so I'll be your lovely hostess on the bus. Okay. Hola. Uh, so uh, with that, um, we are going to lump all of these into one month and make up for lost time. Whoa. I will be a wow. little man. You boy. Oh, my God. Oh, oh that'll be a hoot. Oh, yeah. timer. <laughs> timer. Going up time. So we're going to start frying some dough. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. So, see here, the donuts have kind of risen a bit, got oh, yeah. a little height to them. It popped up. Sweaty. That's what you want in a nice uh, proof donut. So, 
So I just got to check the temperature. Remember, you're going to want it at about 340 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, checking it there. We're here. If you don't have a thermometer, again, that's fine. A uh, simple way to check if your oil's getting hot, hot, or there. Uh, put your hand over it. If you feel the heat coming off of it, you know, that's always a good sign. Can I tell hot. you what my, gra my great-grandmother taught me? Because they didn't have thermometers. She was born in the 1800s in a poor village in Greece. Well, it was Greece. It's now Turkey. She would say, take a little pinch of flour and flick it in there. Yes. And if it sizzles, you know it's ready to go. Do you agree with that? That's a good way. That's a good way to tell if you're like trying to get your oil hot on a saute pan. Um, okay. But when you're frying, I like to just grab a little piece of dough, drop it in there. If you see that it's like frying pretty good, add a nice color. You're good. If you see that the donut or the dough itself is turning like really dark really quick, that means that you're going to burn the donut or the dough and the inside is going to be raw. Uh, oh. If you see that your oil smoking is way too hot. Uh, if you get to that point, just turn it off. You can probably mix it with a spoon just to get it moving. It'll lower the temperature of the oil. Uh, but if you get it to that type of heat, just turn it off and just let it sit for a few. But you can see here, I, you can see here like it's just floating, doing its thing. See the little fry bubble that's turning nice and golden brown. Here we go. So. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Okay, nice. awesome. But that's what you're looking for. Nice and slow. We're in quarantine. We don't got to brush this, you know? <laughs> if so it's taught us anything, it's to slow down and like Love it. enjoy it. Absolutely. So Chef, something that we didn't uh, mention, but we, um, I know that this was a great tip that you shared, was that before we start cooking to actually put out the biscuit dough at least 30 minutes before so mm -hmm. that it goes to room temperature. And how does that affect the cooking time? Well, I mean, if your dough's cold, it's going to take a lot longer for the yeast to like wake up and activate. Yeast likes to pretty much do its thing in a warmer, in a warm, moist environment. Uh, if it's just super cold, it's going to be asleep. You got to wake it up a little bit. If you take it out 30 minutes beforehand, uh, again, we only proofed it for five minutes and it already got to like a good, nice size. Um, it would probably take like 20 to 30 minutes just to proof, just to get the initial chill off and then for the yeast to start doing its thing. Oh, uh, so it does cut awesome. off time on your proofing. That's why like the pop when I opened it was a lot louder than like it normally would be because it was already a bit warm uh, and good to go. So. Oh, awesome. Uh, take it out. Good tip. And now the fun part, we get to fry these bad boys. Yay. So don't get scared. Don't, with working with oil, it's super easy. Nothing to be scared about. But just gently put it in. You're going to see it's starting to float. My favorite thing to do when I make a donut or like a good trick I've learned throughout the years, give it a nice little taste. Uh, that's pretty much just fancy chef talk where we're going to put some oil over it. Gets a nice color in the donut on top. You're gonna see it start to puff up and you're gonna have a nice, really fluffy donut. Uh, I've seen Ooh. people make these and they just like throw it in and it's like, we're just gonna let it ride, but you get a better product like this. So, just so Chef, when you're basting, sorry Chef, so when you're basting and actually putting the oil on top of the donut as well, like why does that tend to make it fluffier versus just putting the donut on top of the oil and letting it sit? You get the steam going in there, you're getting it from the top and bottom. It's like when you put it in the bottom and it starts floating, like the bottom is going to start cooking and you have just the dough on top, it's like in the stages of being I raw see. and like kind of cooked. And this will just get it going and get the gases in there going. Just so like the more even it. cook then versus having yeah. raw dough on top. Pretty much. Uh, we're going to baste it. See, it's already turning a nice golden brown. So you flipped it, right? It's beautiful color. Yes, you want to okay. flip it. Once you hit like a nice golden brown color, just give it a flip, baste the other side. Because when you do this, it's gonna keep frying, keep like cooking it, and then the top is gonna get darker the more you do it. Okay. How long are you, how long are you um, frying and basting each donut for about? We're looking about a minute and a half. That's so fast. If, if you take it, if you took these out ahead of time, the dough is going to be warm. So the cooking process is also going to be a lot easier than using like cold dough that's just been like in the fridge. So that's why it's such a great pro chef tip is to have the biscuit dough out for at least half an hour because 
not only does it cut the time for it to actually fluff up, it also cuts down the time of how long you actually have to fry it for. I love that this is such a, I don't know why I thought donuts would take like hours or I don't, I don't know what I thought, but Super I mean, easy. really is this is quick and it, it's fairly easy too, which is really incredible to make homemade donuts. It's like, also a little scary because then you're like, I'm just going to make donuts for breakfast. <laughs> for <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> you know, just go with it. Like we're in quarantine. Why not? We're about to have summer body after. <laughs> <laughs> And these oh, are special donuts too. These are these are Uncle Nearest whiskey maple glazed donuts. So yeah, these are the type of donuts you take donut. to the beach and just like nibble on. Do <laughs> I'll eat donuts on the beach. I don't care. Ain't that alcohol in it? Hell yeah. Whatever. So here we have the donut. It's nice and fried. I have chef hands. I can hold a lot of heat. So don't <laughs> touch the donut when it comes out of the fryer, please. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the difference in size once you fry it. Wow. That looks so amazing. Oh, I can't wait to make these. Oh my god. And then if you guys don't have the tongs, you need the butter knife. Put it in the hole. Oh, well, look at that. Smart. Boom diggity. Beautiful. Love you can it. Put it on a cooling rack or a plate with some uh, paper towels on it just to absorb some of the oil. Uh, I'm going to do two donuts at a time. I mean, if you want to. Now we're getting crazy. If you feel know, confident enough in your donut making experience <laughs> or your craft. So I think when I make these, I'm going to do them on my, I have the little burner on my grill so that I don't um, get all the, I don't know, fryer smell in the house, but and I can be outside. And so that's, I think that's how I'm going to do it. Just a good tip. Like whenever you fry in big batches like this, like you're doing donuts. So you can reuse this oil five, six, seven times. Like if you use it within a good like time period. Ooh. But the oil's not going to get dirty. It's going to have the same like fried taste. But I mean, if you're making like fried chicken or something. You... Uh-oh. Well, frozen? Um, I think we froze up a little bit. That's all right. We shall wait for for him to come back. It happens. Well, I was just gonna say, I remember my grandmother keeping a coffee can of grease in the kitchen all the time. I know that's a Southern thing too. Yep. And I was so disgusted by it. I didn't know, I was a kid, I was like, ew, what's that? <laughs> but you know, she went through a war, so she, you know, they tended to keep <laughs> to keep things and be very, very frugal. Um. May, you made these donuts already, right? <gasps> <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. Look at that. They're I'm amazing. excited. Those are amazing. And, and still, actually, I actually made them on my regular stove top. There was no smoke and no smell. Oh, so, good to know. Okay. What kind of oil, really nice what kind of oil do you use, May? It's a canola. Canola? Am, am I pronouncing that right? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm canola. Sure. Yeah. Is it canola? Is it, it's canola. It's a kink song. So, right? so it's canola. A kink song. When I say that, now I'm thinking of cannolis, and now I'm on like an Italian dessert tangent right now. Uh, next up, gluttonous. Uncle Nerd's cannolis. <laughs> we'll get our New York City Don't. brand ambassadors hook up some with that. <laughs> I love it. We'll just do it. desserts from everywhere. Really Okay, so do you have any recommendations for how to drink a spirit to detect all of the notes? Oof. Oh. That's her oh, Michael. Uh, Michael, that is a very loaded question. And you know what would be cool? Why don't each of us answer it separately? Because here's the thing. Um, it depends on who you are. It depends on your sense of smell, your sense of taste, and how um, de how delicate that is. It we we are learning through science that there's a possibility that women um, smell uh, more than men do and taste more, and that comes down to a very primal thing of us being the birthers and having to uh, sense something wrong with the with the baby, the the uh, <laughs> the child. <laughs> um, it also has to do with training your palate. Um, and typically you'll find that 
when you work with a spirit, you want to work with one spirit over and over and over. And you should get to the point where one of the, the ways I was taught many, many, many years ago was to pick, and it was in whiskey. I, I had four whiskeys and I would just taste each one every day. And you have to do it at different times of the day. And when I tell you this is a rabbit hole, Michael, this is a rabbit hole. So it, what you just ate affects it, how you're feeling that day, the season, the temperature, the color of your walls. This is no joke that you might find if you've done distillery tours that the person blending or the master distiller director of operations will test samples in a white room. It's the same room every time and they're blind. So they know that it's sample A, B, C, and D and you're gonna rate those samples. So you don't necessarily know exactly what you're drinking and you don't wanna be around anyone else because we can all influence each other. Um, but take four whiskeys and then just every day sip them. And I don't mean drink it, like sip it literally let it coat your tongue, hold on to it, come back to it. Do that, let's say for a month, and then go ahead and put them in nondescript bottles, like mason jars, let's say. And they all look exactly the same. And on the bottom of them, you have a piece of paper and it says one, two, three, four. So you don't know what you're drinking. And then start blind testing yourself. And all of a sudden you're gonna, you should get to the point very quickly where you know exactly which one it is. And that means you've picked out some of the important notes that differentiate that and make that spirit different. Yay, Chef is back with Hi, us. Sorry for the technical difficulties. That's all right. We were answering a question. Did you run away with a donut? No worries. <laughs> as long as you didn't run away with a donut, Chef. So come on back. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? So the question was, do we have any recommendations for how to drink a spirit to detect all of the notes? And so I was kind of explaining how you build up to that and that it depends on your palate. And when it comes down to, just to finish the answer, how to drink it to detect it, again, that's going to matter. So it depends on the proof level. So if you have a, a level uh, 80 proof to 95 proof, you can do that in a Glen Cairn glass, which is, I can't grab it, a tulip shaped glass. If it's a higher proof, you want to do it in a more open glass, like a red wine glass or a rocks glass um, to let it aerate. And you want to just think about it. You want to sip it and, and really think about what am I tasting? What, do, what am I smelling? And there's no wrong answer. There's no right answer at all. If you say I'm getting bubble gum and Lucky Charms, that's exactly what you're getting and nobody can tell you you're wrong. Um, there are also flavor wheels out there. I'll, I'll pop a link for you guys to flavor wheels that help you detect, you know, I'm getting this I, and you can't put, you know, you can't put words to it. Maybe citrus is this huge category, but how do you go inside that category? These flavor wheels help. So really just go back to, I suggest get a bottle of Uncle Nearest, 1884, 1856, and sip on it, just a little sip every day. And you will learn these notes. You will learn the smell of it. And if someone says, I'm going to blindfold you and put it in front of your nose, after a while, you'll get it every time. It's really repetition. But start with a clean palate. So you might, it, oftentimes, I'll see people like, oh, I, you know, I drink everything that's barrel proof, meaning it's 100 proof and over. And they're like smoking cigars and eating ch spicy chili. I'm like, well, you can't smell or taste anything. Of course you have to drink everything over proof. <laughs> you burned out your freaking palate, <laughs> dummy. Um, yeah, there is no, <laughs> there is no right or wrong, wrong answer. But it is practice. It takes a lot of practice, and and you can do that with any, not with vodka, but you can do that with gin. You can do that with rum. <laughs> vodka sucks. You can do that with beer, and you can do that with wine, <laughs> and you can do that with liqueurs as well. <laughs> Same thing with food. I mean, you. We have a chef with us tonight. Um, chefs can detect certain spices um, by the smell of the spice in a dish, some, or they can t have one little taste of something and they can detect what, what ingredients, is, especially like the main ingredients, right away. And that is, again, experience and repetition and also having an elevated palate. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm a palate protector, so I'm really careful. I don't eat spicy food anymore, which means I have no tolerance for it anymore. But that also I've never means- i had a tolerance for it. Don't feel bad. I used to burn my brains out with it, um, but you know, so I protect my palate so that I can detect delicate notes. So that nice. that's a that's a long, long and long short answer for a huge question. 
rabbit holes, rabbit holes. And you know what, that's it's great because it just shows that there's so much to learn and not necessarily in an academic technical way, mm -hmm. which is definitely one aspect of it. But the other is just how do you sharpen your senses mm -hmm. and just so that you have enough sense memory to recall, um, you know, smells and tastes. Oh, this is like, you know, the lavender that was in my mom's yes. garden in, in, in France and all that good stuff. So, you know, Chef, I'd like to ask you, like when you are developing new dishes um, and, you know, building, uh, you know, building something together in your mind, like how do you, how do you work with, how, how do you do that? How do you construct that? Um, you know, uh, when is you make, it- Like when I'm making a dish, uh, mm -hmm. pretty much just figure out what I want and then like what I'm trying to make and then go in my head and see what flavors go good with it. Like what can I do with the ingredient? Like, for example, like you can have a carrot. Well, okay, what can you do with a carrot? You can turn it into a puree, you can turn it into a dust, you can turn it into a chip. Uh, you can fry it, you can roast it, you can just dehydrate it, you can play with the texture. Uh, so you look at it like that, like, how do I want this ingredient to stand out? How do I want these flavors to play with each other? Uh, and plus you also just want your dish to make sense. Like, you don't want to overdo it with like, just throw, throw a bunch of finger lines on something just because it looks cute or like overdo it with garnishes. Like, you know, just make it nice. We have a make question. Are, are Couple good? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Couple questions from guests. Um, Sylvia wants to know, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I love the way it's spelled. If I'm saying it correctly, it's beautiful. Um, what's your favorite donut? My favorite donut? So maple donut, but it's like a category because it's like there's one, one A, one B, one C, and then we go on to number two. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> maple donut. <laughs> you need options for life. <laughs> uh, so it well, goes from maple maple donut to bacon maple donut but the bacon has to be like chopped up it can't just be like a big piece of bacon because it's too hard to mm. too hard to chew on and then after that like just a simple chocolate glaze okay and then jennifer wants to know i, I this question comes right from my heart will it be <laughs> will it be detrimental if i add more whiskey to the donuts <laughs> no, never. Whatever your heart desires. I mean, it's gonna be a, the glaze will be a little looser, but I mean, once. Can I just make a suggestion for for Jennifer? Jennifer, my love, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make the donuts, right? We're gonna have a glass of whiskey. We're gonna dip the donuts into the whiskey, right? Do we agree? Oh, my, cup's, my cup's not big enough for that. Though. Yes. <laughs> like, we're gonna do it. <laughs> Forget coffee. Who needs to dip their donuts into coffee, please? <laughs> this is you quarantine know, life. <laughs> Sailor, I was actually thinking of making a uh, uh, hot apple cider whiskey cocktail to go along with the Uncle Nearest mm -hmm. Maple Glazed Donut. Just something warm and comforting. So uh, Jennifer, thanks for bringing that up because now I'm going to go and experiment with uh, an apple cider later. See, I was going to so, do a awesome. salty cocktail. Yes. To balance. Are you? Yeah, because oh, I'm not nice. a big sweets person, but I love this. I love this idea. So for me, I would go saline all the way to get a really good balance. Nice. You can even just cut oh. these up two into little like donut hole shapes, and then just have little dunks of pouring it into the glaze too. It doesn't necessarily have to be a donut. Ooh, I like that. Shape. Ooh, you can just cut them into I pieces love and just fry them up, and then just you know sit on the couch, watch some Oprah, and just you know. Yes. Okay, so opinions on Irish coffee with donuts. Oh my gosh. Here's the oh. funny thing about this question. Um from Wendy. Wendy, last night we had our cocktail club as we do um every Thursday night, and we talked about we made uh the espresso martini and it, it, this is a polarizing cocktail and we kind of delved into the irish coffee um you can that video is up on the uncle nearest facebook page if you want to see that um so yeah you guys what do you think about doing an irish coffee with this yeah of course 
why not? <laughs> how about a how about a Tennessee coffee? How about how about we use some uncle nearest in here and do a Tennessee coffee? <laughs> so okay, how would we so how would we do that? So would we do that with would we want to use any type of liqueur or would we just want to use a sweet cream? I'm just I don't know. Whenever I when I had a really good Irish coffee, it was just a coffee, some whiskey. They lightly whip the whipped cream, not mm -hmm. to like where it's super heavy. Uh, and then just put a little bit of nutmeg on top, and it was like mm. the best Irish mm. coffee I've ever had. Just like having some light whipped cream on top, it was money. Yeah, rather than the Bailey's junk in it, because yeah. I'm not a big fan of that at it's all. Too, yeah, it's did, too uh, sweet. Back in December, I did a, um, <clears throat> I did one with Uncle Nearest 1884 mm -hmm. using the toffee notes, and I made a foam mm. out of uh, kind of kind of like a cream uh, using Rivole, which is a pecan cordial. Mm. And uh, so mm. I added a little bit of a uh, Himalayan salt to that oh. as well, and it just kind of it, it really popped. That's you want to go home watch some uh, vintage Oprah have a good cry. It was, it was <laughs> <a good> cry. <laughs> I I love how in this episode we have we started off with Scarface and then we went to Oprah. Oh, Oprah. So, I, so I Scarface getting, to Oprah. I think we're getting better. <laughs> we're like getting better. To Oprah. I like it. Well, I am dairy <laughs> free. I'm dairy free, so I use oat milk um, because I like the consistency of oat milk and I like the earthiness of it. But I make I won't touch any of those Bailey's things or whatever. Ugh, I don't do any of that. I do coffee. I do whiskey, Uncle Nearest whiskey, and then I like to use an amaro. So I like to use Ooh. like an amaro nonino, an amaro montenegro. This is an Italian liqueur. That's what I put in there to just add a little bit of sweetness because I don't like a ton of sweetness. But you can add more or less and it makes it extra boozy. Um, and then I whip a little bit of oat milk in there, just just a little bit. I don't, I, th I find when it's like, when your <laughs> Irish coffee looks white, I've seen those go out, I'm like, oh, someone's not gonna be in reality. Are you gonna have a bad <laughs> afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Wendy says, thanks. Can't wait to try the Tennessee whiskey made nutmeg and Himalayan salt. Speedy sound great. So awesome. Love it. All Wendy, right. thank you for your question. So Chef, I think it might be time for us to do a glaze since our Ooh. donuts have some time to cool. Yes. My favorite part. Me so too, because it has the whiskey. <laughs> 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 so if you are doing this with the kids, you know, this is like the good time for you to get your kids in here and like play some donuts. If you made the child-proof one, the adult one, we just do this ourselves. The child-proof one. The 21 <laughs> plus ones. <laughs> the 21 plus. So you're going to want to grab your donut. The bottom. You got your glaze. Just gonna give it a nice dunk. Oh, that's easy. This is like process that. is so much easier than I thought it was gonna be. I thought you were gonna have to like brush it on and. I mean, it's not like Krispy Kreme where you could be like face pressed against the glass, like <laughs> looking at your donut come out and like you just see the steam just like coming off the glass because you're just salivating over it. I mean, I do that, but I don't know about other people. I've seen, I've seen it happen. <laughs> Oh my god. So we're just gonna give it a nice little dunk and the Yum. glaze is gonna set in a few seconds. I mean, you gotta be patient with it. As tempting as it is, like look at that. Doesn't it look good? Just that is beautiful. Do you have no. to wait for it to set? I, I, mean, just, wait. I mean, we're at home. You can just like dunk and go. Exactly. What I, that's what I think is gonna happen. <laughs> I have a feeling it's that's quarantine. how it's gonna There are no in. rules. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what I, I really love about it too is it, it's kind of a little bit of an uh, like an illusion because they look so fancy and they look store bought. Yeah. And actually, oh wow, I just had I just had some of my glaze. Where's my straw? I'm gonna sip out of it. It's absolutely delicious. Um, it's so good. So like sorry, the best I, part about it is like you, you can just smell the whiskey in this. But oh, like tasting it, it's super that. subtle and it's just like perfect. Just perfect. I love that. Um, so but, the donuts do seem like low on the glaze. It's fine. Uh, once they set, you can give them like a second dunk or a third dunk and just get okay. the amount of icing you want on it. Um, if you want it like heavily coated, which I mean, after trying this, you're just going to want to why do just drink this. <laughs> <laughs> They're already making that since they quarantine. And how how long is uh, the glaze good for? Like, can we keep it refrigerated for a day yeah. or two? Yeah. Okay. Keep it refrigerated, put it in like a nice airtight container. I mean, you, you can even put it in a Ziploc bag and just keep it in the fridge. 
Uh, and then when you're ready to use it, just pull it out. If you see that it's like really hard, not really hard, but like somewhat solidified, just pop it in the microwave and it'll melt. Um, so it's something good. You can probably just keep it in there for like a good week or two and then keep eating. I mean, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? The whiskey is probably going to ferment a little bit and get a little extra. I have little a question. Yes. Um, how... Because I, I have a thought, and I don't know if it'll work out, but how hard will the glaze get if you, let's say you were to line a shot glass with it, will it harden up on its own enough? We can give that a test right now. Because you know where I'm going with this, right? Uh, <laughs> so I have a shot glass, mine are only green though, I'm sorry. <laughs> so if we were to... If we were to make little shot glasses out of the glaze and then fill them with, chill them, freeze them, and fill them with whiskey, would that work? Probably. Like chocolate? I mean, you, could like do, you could also do like a rim on a shot glass. Mm -hmm. And then go that route, pop your whiskey in there and try both of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, essentially you could do that, just freeze it in a mold and then just serve the whiskey in it. But you'd have to make it thick enough because if the whiskey's like, too warm it's just gonna melt okay um, but yeah you can definitely do that even if you do it in like a mold and if your facility is able to get liquid nitrogen just dip it in oh. there and it'll make like a nice nice shell actually yeah it'll make a nice little shot glass for you mm -hmm. so chef do you have any <laughs> so chef i'd love for our to get a close-up view for those of us who are not cooking with us right now because I know that they can't wait to try this recipe as soon as they can. Uh, if we can just see what the amazing Uncle New York's oh, look like. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. That oh my is God. so Do the beautiful. spin plate. Do the spin plate, Chef Moses. <laughs> Do the spin plate. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, wow. 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 Those oh, are beautiful. And they were so easy to make. I can't yeah, get over how easy... Unbelievable. They are to make. I'm one of those yeah, people want, that like. You want to pull out the chocolate sauce, drizzle it on top, throw nuts on it, throw uh, sprinkles. Whoa! Yes. Uh, calm down. <laughs> 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 you like take it in the piece and put in some ice cream. Yeah, you like that idea. What? Oh, I love that thing, idea. <laughs> Chef, you have given us incredible cooking tips, an amazing recipe that you developed for us. Um, by the way, I love that you created maple glazed donuts playing off of the incredible maple, super smooth, long maple finish from S U 56 Sorry about that, guys. Um, <laughs> if people want to stay in touch with you, um, how can they do so? And I know Sailor is going to uh, put up your Instagram links, um, but just for those of us who are listening on the podcast, can you let us know how people can stay in touch with you? Uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, I do have a Instagram account. It is uh, at Chef Moses Ponce. Um, you can reach me on there. I do have an email address if you guys have any inquiries or have any questions. It's Moses A. Ponce at yahoo.com. I'm posting um, that right now. But yeah, if you guys have any questions and want any tips, you know, just send them my way. So tips and for tips, my friends. Please remember that. that that's right. Um, all of our industry workers right now are, you know, at home, not working, and some are furloughed, some are laid off, some are sadly fired, and, and their restaurants may or may, and bars may or may not come back, and some are lucky enough to somehow still be getting a paycheck. But everyone, you know, uh, as I'm sure some of you watching, you know, are, are hurting a little bit right now. So one of the reasons that we started this virtual channel and, and to keep connecting with you guys and and still uh, bring you some awesome, fun Uncle Nearest content is to highlight people like uh, Chef Ponce here and make sure that we can um, just just keep him keep him working in the kitchen. <laughs> and I haven't worn an apron in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, so Sailor's <laughs> going to have links to Chef's virtual tip jar. Yep, and I already posted it all. If you guys, thank you, and if you guys it. love these donuts, Chef has actually been gracious enough to agree to come back on a future episode of VIP Happy Hour. And Sailor, you're going to be very happy about this because I know how you feel about Cobbler. So <gasps> with our 1884 expression, <gasps> Chef is going to make a peach cobbler and he is going to walk us through it. So we're just gonna put our hands oh my up right now yes. for that. <laughs> okay, I will, yes. I will move my studio to the kitchen. 
<laughs> and maybe how about I will swap, I will let you be producer that night and I'll do, I'll make it along yes. with chef because cobbler is my jam. We were talking about this before the Done. show started because I'm not a super sweets person and cobbler, you can add a lot of citrus to it and you don't have to use a ton of sugar. So it was always a really great dessert for me. So that. I like using honey on mine. It just, oh, so good. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> so things for us to look forward to. Chef Moses, thank you so much for joining us for VIP Happy Hour. Yeah. Um, Thanks for thank having you me, guys. for creating these incredible show-off donuts because these, these are, are show-off show donuts, donuts. These are show-off donuts. And now we are all able to see how easy they are. I hope this makes everyone smile and gives them this nice warm feeling and inside. Um, because how can you go wrong with whiskey and maple and syrup and fried dough? So that's all I'm saying about that. But yes. um, thanks for joining us, guys. And hope to see you soon next time, next Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Every Friday. And thank you so much. It, Chef, it was so awesome to hang out with you tonight. You're, it was you're great awesome. Hanging out with you guys. And we're all going to, and Speedy, thanks for jumping on with us tonight from Tennessee. I know it's much later there for you. Um, we appreciate you hanging out with us and everybody that joined us. Thank you so much. It was so lovely to see such a full room tonight and everybody interacting like they are. And as a matter of fact, uh, chef, I think we're going to have to have you come back a couple of times because we just oh, yeah, got another sure. request for you to do a savory dish. So you might just have to be our quarantine official chef. So again, another executive decision that I made when I have no power, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks everybody so much this was happy hour live with our whiskey maven and the uncle nearest team thank you so much and uh on to after hours so thanks everybody have a great night have a good night everybody.